Hi everyone, I'm Marianne. I'm a visual artist from Singapore, currently in Singapore, and welcome to another installment of my weekly vlog series, Live Your Dream. So this is where I share what I'm learning in my journey so far as an artist, as someone who is all about pursuing a worthy and meaningful purpose, um, all about living my dreams and fulfilling whatever it is that I believe matters to me the most. And I'm recording this series as a way of sharing what I've learned in the hopes of inspiring, motivating, encouraging you as you go on your journey of pursuing your dreams and whatever matters to you the most. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments or you can also directly message me through any one of my social media links which you can find in the write-ups attached to these videos. So this week, a friend of mine has invited me to speak at his kids' primary school um, some sort of event where like a career talk kind of event so I will be talking to two classes of students like each about 30 40 students um, about you know the the job of an artist and what that is like so I, it has been very challenging for me because I have been trying to figure out what you know what do I talk about to like 12 year old kids in Singapore with regards to that and um, I've literally spent like the last <laughs> eight hours just trying to figure out what am I talking about and like making my PowerPoint slides um, and it, it definitely took way longer than I had planned for. At the same time I'm also thinking about like what do I record for tonight's vlog and that's when I was like hey wait you know let me repurpose some of this content. I get the intention of this um, program is to kind of prepare them and get them to start really thinking about um, their future and what do they really want to do with their lives. And so I approached it more from that angle. But one of the things that I found really funny in the guidelines was they talk about like what are the job qualifications for that job. And you know being an artist I'm like okay what are the job qualifications of being an artist? And um, and I decided that, you know what, I'm just going to share from my experience what that is. Because really as an artist, you know, what are the job qualifications? I guess depending on what kind of artist you want to be, um, if it's something more technical like, you know, animation or design, then you have to learn certain skill sets. But I guess if you want to be like a visual artist, a contemporary fine artist, you don't necessarily need a lot of qualifications. And so I was trying to think of, you know, how can I also share something that is still... Um, generic enough that is applicable to pretty much almost any artist and that's where I came up with these five things. So um, the five job qualifiers for being an artist, I don't know what else to call it and I might record a more um, proper video next time but for now this is what I have got. Okay so the first thing um, you know that qualifies you as an artist is you have to decide that you are an artist. Like you have to declare to yourself, I am an artist. This is the most important thing because nobody can ever give you that title or take that away from you. Like whatever, in fact, whatever job you want, okay, whatever you want to be, you are the one that decides for yourself that I am that and nobody else can say otherwise. And it all starts from that because only when you have decided that this is who I'm going to be, then you can figure out what are the actions you need to take in order for you to fulfill that. At the and same time, also being an artist is who you are. It's not just what you do. It is a way of living. It is the way you see the world. It is, you know, you approaching the world with your creativity, your curiosity, your ideas, and you wanting to express them and put them out into some form. So it is more than just a job. It is really how we embody this um, role that we have or this identity that we have in every single aspect of our lives. At the same time also, everyone is an artist in their own way and so there is no comparing yourself with anybody else. And personally, I think that art is whatever you say it is. Whether it's something that you have created on your own or whether you are viewing somebody else's work, you decide what art is for you and what it means to you. The second thing that qualifies you for being an artist is the belief that your art is good enough. We often have this association of, you know, oh, I didn't get like an A for art when I was in school and so therefore my art is not good enough, therefore I shouldn't be an artist. Or, you know, when you're a child, someone else might have looked at your art and said that, oh, you know, forget about it, like go, go do something else instead. So there's also a misconception that being a good artist means also being able to draw well or to paint well. And that oftentimes tends to be associated with like something that looks realistic or still looks like a photograph. 
But really, when you look at the history of art, when you look at you know, a lot of contemporary art today, um, you don't see a lot of things that are like realistic or looking like a photo. And artists nowadays can use all kinds of materials to make art. Um, there is an artist that I really like on Instagram called Windy Chien, and she uses rope as a way to make art. Like she ties these beautiful knots into and, and creates these beautiful sculptures um, out of out of rope, basically. <laughs> and um, you know, you don't need drawing skills to be able to do that. And um, there are other artists who also use um, recycled materials, for example, to create like installations, to create sculptures. You know that that you know, send a message about um, environmental um, awareness and things like that. So this, so one such artist that I follow who does that is Von Wong. Um, so you can see, you know, in the realm of art nowadays, you don't really have to be like excellent at drawing or painting if that is not the material that you have chosen to use. And you can make art from literally anything. But what does matter then is that you want to be good at whatever it is that you have chosen to make your art with. Which leads me into the third point, which is the importance of constantly practicing and improving. So when we tell ourselves that our art is good enough, it's not so much like a complacent or a narcissistic thing, but it's more like to get yourself going to show your art, like without it having to reach the certain idea of perfection or the ideal that you think it's supposed to be at. But whatever level you're at, whether you are just starting out or whether you are already a master at something, there is always room for improvement and growth. And Coming back to drawing again as a skill set, anyone can learn how to draw. Drawing is a technical skill that if you know the right principles, if you know the right steps, if you find the right teacher, if you know the right method, and if you practice consistently as well, you can improve your drawing skills in a really short time. But what I'm saying is that, you know, it does not matter whether you are like, you know, just a beginner or whether you are a pro at drawing, there's always room for improvement. And not just in the materials that you use, but even like your art style. Even like the way you think about art and the way you conceptualize your artwork, there's always room for improvement and growth there. So this is something that we always have to work on as artists, even though we may think that we have already, you know, created a certain level of stability with our art. Because the moment we start thinking that we have made it, whatever that means for you, that is where we stop growing and that is where we stop evolving and because of that we are actually, we actually stagnate. We actually don't, um, we don't stay at the same level. The moment you stop growing, you actually kind of go backwards because of this phenomenon called entropy that exists in the world. Anything that does not improve actually, um, you know, goes the other way. It doesn't just maintain. So number four that qualifies you to being an artist is that you have to stay open to new ideas. Ideas and inspiration are literally everywhere around you. And the world is always trying to communicate with us, whether we realize it or not. And there are always things that we can learn from the different people around us. Um, of course, I would say, you know, even though you stay open to new ideas and inspiration, be careful about who you choose to learn from and who you choose to follow. Because there are people out there who don't exactly um, come from the right place or the right intentions and they may teach or say something that you know sounds appealing in that moment but when you really think about it and dig deeper it's like wait a minute you know something about this doesn't feel quite right so that being said it is important to stay open to what's around you and not to like immediately come to you know a judgment or a conclusion around it part of staying open also means being receptive to new experiences and allowing yourself to try different things out so every time you have a new idea go test it out or every time you have a new um you know inspiration or inquiry go find up go find some new answers and it's also about expanding your experiences as a person like for example what's your favorite flavor of ice cream and how did you arrive at that conclusion that that is your favorite flavor like um, you know in the realm of ice cream there are so many different flavors there's so many different brands that you know even like chocolate from one brand to another is not going to taste exactly the same so when it comes to determining our most favorite flavor of ice cream if you've only tried like five ice creams and you decide that you know one out of those five is your most favorite how do you know then you know out of the hundreds or thousands of other ice creams out there that there isn't something else that would be your favorite 
So it's like, you know, your favorite is only out of those five versus someone who has tried like 50 different flavors and they have a favorite out of that 50. They have a lot more data that they can, that they have accumulated because of all the different ice cream flavors that they've tasted. So it's the same thing in life. The more experiences you have in an area of life, it allows you more data about understanding yourself better and understanding what you're about better. And it makes allows you also to make better decisions towards finding out what is really right for you. Which and finally, number five, you have to love what you create. When you create something, it has to come from a place of love. It has to come from a place of wanting to really genuinely express something. Of course, you're not going to love everything you create, but at the very least, you want to love the process and the journey that you're on, whether you're an artist or whatever other profession that you choose. It's also important to love what you create because you have to be your number one fan. Not everyone is going to love your art, just like how you know you don't love everybody out there, just like how not everybody loves you. Um, that's the truth and the reality of the world. Not everyone's going to love you. So in the same way, not everyone is going to love your art. Not everyone is going to love your work. But you are going to have certain groups of people who will love it and who will support you no matter what. But ultimately, people being people, our tastes will change over time. You know, what resonates with us changes over time as we evolve. And so the most important person that needs to love your work has to be you. So there you have it, the five things that I think qualifies a person to be an artist um, and I think that this is way more important than any of like you know whatever drawing skills that you have um, whatever background that you have whatever education that you have not to say that those things are not important but I think that these five things would permeate pretty much um, every single kind of artist and possibly every single profession as well mostly almost I think so to quickly recap, number one, decide I am an artist. Number two, believe that your art is good enough. But at the same time, number three, constantly practice and improve because there's always room for improvement. Number four is to stay open to new ideas and accumulate new experiences for yourself. And number five, love what you create. So if you have enjoyed today's video, subscribe to my channel on YouTube. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Or you can also directly message me through any one of my links which you see in the write-ups attached to these videos. And I'll see you next week.